Welcome back everybody. So we're back on the RD4 block here and I got it flipped over. I got it sitting on the studs, but we're on blocks of wood, so we're not messing up the threads. I will have to pull them studs out before it goes to the machine shop, but just to keep this going, it's just easier to flip it right now and just pull the rest of these out. I can pull them studs out later. So what we need to dive into tonight is getting the oil pump off of here as long as or as well as this pickup tube and then from there i think we can go pull rod caps and main caps and see if we can get the crankshaft to come out and that will allow this front cover to come off so let's go after the fold over locks on these bolts here and get those out of the way the two bolts up front and the back bolt that bolts this pickup to the oil pump out. You can take the pickup and we'll just set that in the oil pan for later. I went ahead and removed this bolt and the one behind it with a wrench. Uh, you can't get the impact in there to get those. I'll be able to take these off though with the swivel socket. And of course we dropped one. It's okay, it can't go far. Well, I found my bolt. You can see it way down at the end there. I'll have to get a magnet and get that out. But at this point here, we are ready to start pulling rod caps and main caps. I know this rear one is a press fit, and that's what this hole here is for. We'll have to try and see what I got on hand to pull that out. With all the fun work of removing all these cotter pins out on all of the bolts on the rods and the mains, I did notice stamped five, stamped five, four, three, two, there's a one right up there. Which leads me to believe this has been a part before. If you look, there's a one there. There's a two, three, and a four. So that's not a bad sign. Hopefully the bearings in that look good in here. Well, I saved everyone the liberty of me taking all these loose. So we'll go ahead and get these out of the way, including the rods. And some of these started to move the studs for the rods so we'll get all these out of the way see if we can get some caps to come off being that number one let both of them come out it's probably the rod we'll start with here A little bit of pitting in there but honestly you can't feel it I can see it but it almost looks like either discoloration from moisture 
either way we're not even worn through the babbit yet to the copper that actually looks really good bring you guys in for a closer view here honestly if they all look like that I don't even think we'll have to cut this crank we'll have to measure it and see if it's out of round or anything but that actually looks very very good for this thing sitting as long as it did number two looks just as promising as number one crank has a little discoloration here from moisture pull three about the same story as far as bearings go crank looks pretty good this discoloration though I think that might come out with a very light polish which means we could still run these same bearings now well, here's one with moisture in it bearing looks all right Same discoloration, no major pitting. I think that would clean up in a polish. On to the main bearings here. A little bit of scoring, but can't really catch it with a fingernail. Just look at the size of that bearing. Just the overall thickness of it. Thing's huge. They don't make bearings like that anymore. Now they're tiny. At least everything I run across. And as for the crank, same thing. I think a good polish would do it some good. Let's see what number two looks like. Looks pretty good. As I said earlier, all this stuff would have to be mic to make sure we're still within tolerance. And number three here. We can get that one to wiggle loose. Everything's covered in oil here. Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to find more of the moisture again. I'd have to spend a little more time cleaning that up. Might be usable. See there's rust right along the crank there. Actually, where the bearing rides, though, it seems fairly decent. It's just in the center there where that oil groove is. That's where it was holding the moisture. Go ahead and pull number four.
looks like that was coming apart not exactly sure how that was supposed to work if that's just shims crank looks good on number four and number five here we're going to need a puller for the bad part is that is a three-quarter fine thread and I don't have anything long enough here I have short three-quarter fine thread stuff but nothing I can get a hold of so unfortunately I think we're going to end the video here I hope this guys I hope this gives you guys a good representation of kind of what we're looking at so far from what I've seen I think this crank could be usable I would like my machinist to tell me his opinion most of the time they're able to clean stuff like this up a polish really will go a long way but if he finds any deep pitting or flaking that he's not happy with I do have that other crank from Squatch 253 we could measure that one this may be undercut. I didn't see anything on the bearings. I don't know if these part numbers would tell us if it's undercut or not. I don't think they're like the standard car bearings where you pop them out and they say, you know, 10 under, 20 under, whatever. But we're not out of options. We have spare parts. We have a spare block. We have spare bearings. We have spare rods, pistons, the whole nine yards. So, thanks everyone for watching. I do appreciate it. I know the feed's been kind of slow lately. Life's just been busy, but we're going to get back at it. I got to get this off to the machine shop here. So, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you on the next one.